Okay, welcome to the third clip yeah, on chapter 20. In the previous clip, we were looking at the EAR, yeah, computing the EAR or the cost of trade credit yeah, annual. Yeah. Why do you want to take the EAR? We want to compute the annual yeah, cost of taking the credit. So here, we just take R here. This is the period rate. Yeah. The period rate applies only for this period yeah, from C to B. Yeah. C to B, yeah, or C minus B, okay. So that is R, yeah, period rate. But we want to compute the uh, yearly rate, yeah, effective annual rate, yeah. Therefore, we take the EAR here. So we know that the formula for EAR is one plus R raised to the power of m minus one. We know that R is this, yeah, here, okay. One plus uh, one uh, divided by one minus a minus 1 this is r yeah so when we add 1 okay we remove this yeah therefore you get 1 over 1 minus a this is 1 plus r yeah we raise this to the power of m m here is the number of c minus b periods in a year yeah so number of times this can be uh, uh, reproduced yeah uh, or number of times this can be uh, done yeah in one year so it is 365 divided by c minus b yeah so you raise this to the power of this m yeah 365 divided by c minus b this you minus one yeah remember don't forget this minus one yeah minus one so this will be your ear yeah so now if we apply this in this example here we take the same credit term 2 forward slash 10 net 45 yeah now this is the period rate 2 out of 98 remember it is a over 1 minus a yeah okay now uh, okay this is uh, 2 over 98 raised to the power of 365 divided by c minus b you get this yeah 365 45 minus 10 here yeah raised to the power of this you minus 1 you get 23 0.45 percent yeah note this the period rate is only two percent yeah it looks rather small but if you annualize this this is two percent for 35 days yeah okay for 35 days uh, slightly less than um, uh, one month yeah or slight uh, slightly more than one month sorry yeah so it is about 2.5 percent or 2.04 percent so if you uh, compound this 12 times in a year yeah, that's what we have done this year more than 12 times okay uh, slightly less than 12 times yeah? so you get 23.45 yeah, percent that is the EAR and this is quite high yeah now this means what what does that mean yeah? this is actually the revenue for the company okay the company that offers this credit term yeah and it's cost for the customer the customer means the buyer okay if you're buying from uh, the supplier the supplier offers you this trade credit and if you take this trade credit you are incurring this cost yeah this is a cost for the buyer but for the company that offers this credit this is revenue okay this is the return yeah, that they get 23.45 percent per year yeah effective rate okay so the company benefits then the customers choose to forego the discount or they take the credit yeah, same thing yeah? if you forego the discount you take the credit if you take the discount then you forego the credit yeah remember that yeah okay so finding the implied interest rate when customers do not take the discount that means they take the credit is that okay so this is the cost for the customer but it's also the revenue for the company yeah now this cost is very high yeah so even though it looks like 2% yeah, discount, actually it works out to be 23.45% per year. Yeah? So companies, uh, when they are offered yeah, this type of credit terms to uh, buy their supplier, uh, it will be wise for the company to compute the EAR. Yeah? And if the EAR is very high, then they should not take the credit, they should take the discount. If, uh, this also means yeah, the cost of foregoing the discount yeah so if you forego the discount this is the cost to the company yeah, 23.45 percent per year that is quite high yeah 
Therefore, if let's say you can borrow, the company can borrow funds from the bank at about 8%, yeah? they should borrow and take the cash discount. They pay earlier yeah? rather than uh, taking the credit and foregoing the cash discount. Is that okay? All right, yeah, so that's the idea behind this. Yeah, let's move on to the next slide. All right, yeah, let's continue and go on to the next uh, clip. Okay, yeah, now uh, we, are, we are going to look at the credit policy effects. Yeah, now if you offer credit yeah, to your customers, what are the effects? Yeah, the credit policy effects for a company. Yeah, the company that offers this credit. Yeah, so there will be revenue effects. Yeah, so when you look at revenue and cost, yeah, we divide this into two categories. Okay, this is actually an extension of what we have looked at in the first uh, first part of this chapter. Yeah, remember the key issues that we are looking at. Okay, so this is actually an extension. Yeah, we we do this uh, more elaborately here. Yeah. Now, revenue effects, okay, when you provide credit yeah, to your customer, there will be a delay in receiving cash from sales. Okay, compare this with selling on cash basis. Yeah? If you sell on cash basis, you collect immediately. When you sell on credit, there is a delay. Yeah? So, this delay is not uh, favorable. Yeah? So, this is a, a negative effect. Okay, so it's revenue, but it's negative effect. But the second one, yeah. You may be able to increase sales, yeah? increase the price. Yeah? You can increase the price. So this is actually a positive effect. Okay, because you can sell more, there'll be greater demand yeah? because you provide credit. Okay, so you can actually raise the price. You may be able to increase the price. Yeah? So this is a positive effect. And this may increase total sales. Yeah? For example, if yeah. You are able to increase price and because of the credit policy the demand from your customers go up okay so your total sales will go up yeah the quantity goes up and the price also goes up yeah? therefore the total sales will go up yeah? so this is a positive effect but there will be delay in collecting the cash yeah? therefore this is a negative effect now we look at the cost yeah uh, from the cost perspective cost of the sale is still incurred even though the cash from the sale is not collected yet. Yeah? So this cost is actually a negative impact. All the costs are negative impacts. Yeah? But revenue, there is negative as well as positive impacts. Yeah? Now the cost of debt, yeah? so this is also a negative yeah? because you need to finance the receivables. Yeah? If you sell on credit, you will have some yeah? or, uh, cash tied up as receivables. Yeah? You cannot convert this immediately to cash yeah therefore you have cost of debt yeah that means cost of financing okay then the third is there is this probability of non-payment bad debts yeah you offer credit some customers may not pay yeah so this is another cost yeah so this is negative yeah negative here means they reduce your cash flow okay positive means they increase your cash flow yeah this also reduces your present value of your cash flow yeah, as you will see later yeah because of this delay uh, you may increase your cash flow later but in present value terms this may be lower yeah it can be lower therefore this is a negative effect now the the other cost effect is the cash discount yeah some customers will pay early and pay less yeah that means they take the cash discount from this credit policy yeah therefore this will be a cost to the company offering the credit yeah so this is also a negative effect yeah? so there are many uh, uh, positive effects okay there are many negative yeah you can see the number of negatives are more it does not mean that giving credit is bad yeah actually these two positives yeah can overcome yeah or outweigh all these negatives it can yeah but sometimes you these negatives can outweigh the positives yeah it's not the number of crosses or ticks that matter yeah? it is the amount of cash flow in present value terms yeah does this positive uh, outweigh the negatives yeah in present value of the cash flow terms yeah? the present value of these cash flows so if it does then you should provide the credit if it does not then you should not provide the credit you should sell on cash basis yeah 
that's the idea behind this is that okay all right we move on yeah let's look at uh, an example here okay so let's look at the example first let's read the example and then we'll try and solve this yeah using a method yeah this method is a bit uh, uh, elaborate yeah so please pay attention yeah your company is evaluating a switch from a cash only policy to a net 30 policy now this company is selling only on cash basis to the customers now they are trying to consider yeah, if they should change to a net 30 this is the credit policy yeah? net 30 means what you allow 30 day credit yeah? net 30 is the full credit term yeah there's no cash discount there's no cash discount term here or cash discount period yeah it's just the credit yeah net 30 policy now the price per unit is one hundred dollars this is the price of the product and yeah, that the company sells to the customer each product is hundred ringgit or hundred dollars yeah and the variable cost per unit is forty dollars okay the company currently sells one thousand units per month yeah so the sales uh, is given in unit per month yeah then under the proposed policy this proposed policy is net 30 policy yeah the company expects to sell 1050 yeah note this yeah this is 1000 under current cash policy yeah but with this new net 30 policy you expect to increase your sales per month by 50 units yeah goes up by 50 yeah so 1050 units the required monthly return is 1.5 percent yeah why is the monthly return given okay yeah, we'll, we'll look at this uh, a bit later yeah so the question is what is the net present value of the switch okay switch from cash only policy to net 30 policy what is net p uh, sorry what is npv yeah npv is net present value yeah so remember as i said in any credit policy we look at yeah, we weigh yeah we weigh the costs and the benefits so net present value is looking at the present value of benefits minus the present value of costs yeah therefore it's called net present value yeah uh, benefits minus cost therefore it's net yeah and this must be in present value terms yeah so if this present value of benefit minus cost if it is positive means benefits outweigh the costs therefore you should switch okay but if the net present value is negative okay that means the costs outweigh the benefits then you should reject you should not switch to the credit policy yeah? you should maintain the cash policy so this answer yeah, this answer what is the net present value will determine the answer for this yeah? should the company offer credit terms of net 30 if this is positive then they should offer the credit term if this is negative yeah that means the cost outweigh the benefits then you should not offer the credit then yeah? that's the decision that we need to make but before that we need to do the analysis yeah how do you do this analysis yeah now uh, cash policy means sales are collected now and cost of sales are paid now yeah? so this is very simple yeah the assumption is you sell now and you collect now and at the same time the cost of sales we assume it is paid now yeah okay so that's the assumption yeah? these are all the assumptions yeah? some points that you need to understand yeah in solving this analysis now with the proposed credit policy sales are collected at the end of the credit period yeah, that means 30 days right so we assume all customers will pay at the end of the 30th day yeah, credit period but the cost of sales are paid now yeah and start yeah now means at the start of the credit period not at the end yeah? this is at the end collected costs will be paid now yeah? at the start of the credit period yeah? so this is important to understand now this proposed policy should increase total sales yeah so this is positive yeah that is why it's in blue yeah and uh, uh, arising from increased sales unit okay but it may also increase sales price per unit yeah the company may be able to increase sales price per unit but also cost of sales per unit may increase okay note this yeah so increase in total sales may be due to increase sales unit sales price per unit 
or also cost of sales per unit. Cost of sales is negative, yeah? If it goes 